Today we get to learn about more angle relationships that occur when you have intersecting lines. In fact, today is all about perpendicular bisector theorem. If a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the end point of the segment. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look here. Do we have a perpendicular bisector picture? Well, let's highlight this. Let's see, this line here looks like it could be the perpendicular bisector. Well, how would we know it? Well, let's take a look at what we can, let me just get a little pen out here. Apparently it doesn't want to turn into a pen. Just give me one second, there we go. All right, so we take a look, we notice that we have a right angle here, which would make it perpendicular to this line AB. And it doesn't cut AB exactly into two equal pieces. Well, sure, we can take a look here. We have a tick mark and a tick mark indicating that this is definitely in the middle. So this is a perpendicular bisector. If that's a perpendicular bisector, if I take a point, for example, point P here, and I go ahead and get out a ruler, and I measure um, a line that I could create from A to P, it will be exactly the same length as a line that I could create from P to B. So one thing we could do is just do an example. Let's say that we have this is A to P is 5. Then how long would P B be? Well, if this is a perpendicular bisector and P is on it, then this would also have to be 5. Let's say these are like centimeters, okay? Now, make sure that you have the perpendicular bisector theorem written down in this picture, and we'll move on to the next diagram. Let's take a look at this problem here. Use the diagrams to find the length. BP is the perpendicular bisector of AC. BP is a perpendicular bisector. If it is, then we need to put a right angle here, and we can put a tick mark from A to B and from B to C because it's bisecting this line that goes all the way from A to C. It cut it into two equal pieces. Now let's take a look at the next little fact. It says CQ is the perpendicular bisector of BD. Well, let's take a look. We'll get a different color pen, and we'll go ahead and go from go along CQ here, and it's acting as a perpendicular bisector of this line BD. So we can write a right angle in here to make it perpendicular. Tick marks to indicate these are exactly the same length as each other. And then we continue on, and it says that AB equals BC, which equals CD. And the tick marks, all being one tick mark, indicate that they're the same. Suppose AP is 5 centimeters, A to P. This line segment is 5 centimeters. If that's 5 centimeters, let's take a look at the next one. BQ equals 6 centimeters. B all the way to Q is 6 centimeters. And they ask you, what is the length of QD? How long is this line that goes from Q to D? Well, we know that this is a perpendicular bisector, so for B to Q should be exactly as Q to D. So BQ equals the same length as QD. If that's true, then QD must also be 6 centimeters. QD is 6 centimeters in length. Let's take a look at another problem that you could use your perpendicular bisector theorem for. Take a look at this picture. We notice that this line goes from D all the way to B, and it makes a right angle, and it cut this line into two equal pieces. So since it did that, that's got to be a perpendicular bisector. Since it does have to be a perpendicular bisector, we take a look at more facts. ED equals 16 centimeters. E to D is 16 centimeters. So let's write a 16 centimeters on that line. DA is 20 centimeters. So go over from D to A, and we'll write 20 centimeters on that line. And DC, it's a big old question mark. Well, if this is on the perpendicular bisector, the segment from A to D, Looks like it's the same length as DC, and it should be according to the perpendicular bisector theorem. They will be exactly equal. So this is 20 centimeters. So if our answer, DC, the length of it equals 20 centimeters. Now remember, whenever they have fine DC with no line segment over it, they want a measurement. So it should be in inches, centimeters, feet, whatever it may be in the diagram. Let's go to question two here. It's a little bit higher level. Let's grab a different color pen. And it says EC equals 15 centimeters. So from E to C, write 15 centimeters on that line. B 
to A is 25, so you go from B to A, and it says it's 25 centimeters. And it asks you from B to C, how long is it? Well, if B to A is 25, and this is a perpendicular bisector point, then this point from B to C should also be 25 centimeters. So, BC, how long is it, is what it's asking here when it doesn't have a segment above here. We go ahead and write 25 centimeters. All right, moving to the next diagram. Make sure you have all of this in your notes. All right, we're going, revisiting the name of this again. This is called the perpendicular bisector theorem. And if it tells you if we have this point P on this line, it, A to P will be exactly the length as P to B. If I move this point up here, I could also draw a line that goes from A to this point, let's say it's Q, and from Q to B. Those two lines will be exactly the same length, assuming you actually draw them straight, not like what I did. So if P or Q or any other point is on the perpendicular bisector, from the perpendicular bisector out to these two ends will exactly be equal. Now, we need to look at what's called the converse converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. <coughs> the converse says if a point is equidistant, in other words, if you see that this happens to be equidistant, you see the little tick mark saying, oh, it's equal distance out to the end, then this is required to be a perpendicular bisector. So converse just reverses the idea. You look at the picture and you notice that these two segments are exactly the same, then you can conclude that DB has to be a perpendicular bisector. So they're very much related, the perpendicular bisector theorem and converse. Converse just switches it around and you notice that the two lines are the same, then you can, re you can infer that this is exactly, or I'm sorry, is a perpendicular bisector. So let's take a look at how we can use the converse with perpendicular bisector in a problem. Take a look at this diagram. You notice that we're from A to D and from D to C. These two line segments have to be exactly equal according to the diagram. We go over to the reading, AD is 10 inches long. So we write, okay, 10 inches long. And BD is 6 inches long. So B to D, this line here is 6 inches long, so I write 6 inches on it. Find the length of A to C. A all the way to C. Well, that's kind of hard to get to. So what we'll do is we'll find out AB. And then if we know AB, we'll also know the length of BC, because since these are two are equal, this is a perpendicular bisector. So let's figure out what AB must be. This is a right triangle. Because this is a perpendicular bisector, this is a leg, this is a leg, and this is the hypotenuse. So good old Pythagorean theorem comes into play. We can write 6 squared plus, and we'll call it b squared because we don't know this side right here. And we always set it equal to the hypotenuse squared. And we don't really want to write a c. We actually want to write the 10 because, ooh, let's start that again. I'll really quickly write that out again. We should have 6 squared plus b squared equals the hypotenuse squared, which happens to be 10 inches long. And so we do 6 squared. Well, that's 36, because 6 times 6 is 36. And 10 times 10 is 100, so 10 squared. Subtract your 36, subtract your 36. And we get b squared equals 64. Well, we don't want b squared. We want to know how long it is from a to b. And we're calling this little part here b, by the way. All right, so what we can do is we can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. Square root of b squared is b. The square root of 64 is 8. 8 times 8 gives you 64, so the square root is 8. So let me grab my eraser. We can erase b, and we can go ahead and grab the pen back, and we can write an a, 8 on here. This was 6, by the way. I forgot I erased that. So AB, oh, sorry about this writing. It's kind of hard to do on this tablet I'm using. AB equals 8, and we're talking about inches, so I should write inches. But if you look at the question, it said, what's the length of AC? Well, AC would require you to take 8 and put an 8 here because these are exactly the same size. Remember there were tick marks here? 8 plus 8, we get 16 inches for AC. 
Let's take a look at another way we can use the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. Here's a nice complicated looking picture. PA equals PC. Okay, tick mark. With those tick marks, can you assume that PB is a perpendicular bisector? Well, yes, you can, because you have the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. That makes both of these angles right here right angles automatically. It automatically allows me to put tick marks here to indicate AB will be exactly the same length as BC. Then I can continue on in this question. Use the diagram to find the angle measures described. Suppose measure of angle 2 is 29 degrees. So please write 29 degrees in your angle right here. And find the measure of angle 1. So we'll call that x because we don't know it. We do know that these two angles together, angles 1 plus angle 2 equals 90 degrees. They are complementary. So let's go ahead and put angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 90 degrees because it's a perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular indicates this is 90 right in here. Um, angle 2 happens to be 29 degrees. Substitute it in. And we do not know angle 1. So what can we do? We can subtract 29 degrees from both sides. And angle 1 must equal, well, we should put measure because we're talking about measurement here. Let's see, 10 minus 9 is a 1, and 8 minus 2 is a 6, so it must be 61 degrees. So the measure of angle 1 is 61 degrees. And if you plug this back in, you'll notice that x up here we could say is 61. And if you add 61 plus 29, they create 90 degrees, which this is a 90 degree angle. Let's move on to the next diagram and see how we can use converse one more time. In this picture, you will notice you have this. A lot of different angles named. Let's take a look at what we have given to us. This is supposed to be a railroad bridge. Suppose that BE is the perpendicular bisector of DS. So I'm going to highlight BE. I'm going to go right along this line, BE. And it's supposed to be the perpendicular bisector of DS. If it's a perpendicular bisector, you should be writing in a right angle here. And you could write a right angle in here. And you could draw this line here from D to F. You probably already have it drawn. Put a tick mark here and a tick mark here to indicate they're exactly the same length. All of those markings that I just wrote, the tick mark and the tick mark, indicating that DE is congruent to EF, and these little right angles is based on the fact that they gave me that this is a perpendicular bisector. Now there's one more little fact that I can also derive from the fact of perpendicular bisector theorem. Take a look from B to F. That would have to be exactly the same size S from B to D, because remember, if you're on the perpendicular bisector, you are equidistant out to those little end points of the line that you cut. Now, I've drawn everything that we can gather from the perpendicular bisector. I would like you guys to take a look at all of the answer choices below. Which of the following statements do you know are true? Select all that apply. I will give you a hint, there are three of these that are true. Three true answers. You need to go ahead and take a look at the diagram and figure out which one of these, or I'm sorry, which three of these are correct. When I go to look at your notes, when you get back to school, I will take a look to see if you have it correct. And please try your best to look at the diagram when you're trying to make these decisions on whether A is correct, B is correct, C is correct, D is correct, and E is correct. There are three correct answers. You must have all three. So please go ahead and try that out now. Have a great day, and I will see you in class tomorrow.